Greetings everyone. Welcome back to At Home Restaurant with Michael Hall. Today we are going to, it's Sunday, so we're going to make um, what for many people is a traditional Sunday meal. We're going to be doing a whole roasted chicken, uh, which we're going to show you how to prep. Here are some of the ingredients we're going to be using today. We've got some parsley, cilantro, thyme, scotch bonnet peppers, green bell pepper, onion, and you'll notice here that I have some sea salt, which is a very important part of what we're going to try and do for you today. I have about a four pound chicken, whole chicken, um, which has been washed. Uh, and we're going to prep it uh, to hopefully get the desired result that we want. I have two lovely large sweet potatoes here that I just picked up this morning. We're going to be making a sweet potato stuffing. And we're going to make our own breadcrumbs to do that. As you can see, I have some raisins here. The sweet potato stuffing is going to be a mix of sweet and savory. And uh, when we come back, we'll show you exactly how we get the savory part of it going. Um, we're going to stuff the chicken with some herbs, but we also prepared a dry rub to put on the chicken. And we have here a teaspoon of chicken seasoning. We have a teaspoon of Caribbean Traditions all-purpose seasoning. We have a teaspoon of Caribbean Traditions. It's a mix of seasonings. It's garlic, pimento, and ginger, which is a, a really wonderful dry blend. And just about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon of jerk, just to make it interesting. Um, of course, you can make your own dry rub using whatever seasons you like, seasonings you like, whatever ones you prefer. Um, this is just what I've chosen to use today. So when we come back, we'll show you how we've prepped stuff uh, in just to get it ready to hit the oven. We soon come back. Welcome back to At Home Restaurant with yours truly, Michael Hall. What we're going to do now is season the chicken that we have washed. While you were away, I patted it down and dried it as best I could with some paper towel. Then I added the sea salt liberally to the skin on both sides and that helped to draw out the extra moisture as well so we have a nice dry whole chicken to be roasted um, normally if you want to get the chicken really dry what you do is you put it in the refrigerator you wash it clean it put it in the refrigerator overnight uncovered uh, and just let it dry out that way and then you can then you get the real um, crispy skin I've done the best I could because I actually forgot to do that last night and so I use a lot of paper towel what we're going to do is get um, what we're going to put inside the cavity of the bird in there first. So I have here just half a head of garlic skin on and I'm just going to stuff this in all the way to the back of the cavity. Don't even take off the skin when the heat hits that and it starts to roast with the skin on. That's when you're going to get the flavor. I have half of a large onion. Um, again, you could have left the skin on. I, I chose to, to peel. You're going to stuff that into the cavity as well. I have um, some sprigs of thyme. What you want to do is just fold this over and stick that up in the cavity also. When all of these natural aromatics release inside the bird, and don't be afraid, again as I say, to get your hands dirty whenever you're seasoning your meat. It's important. I have some green bell peppers. I have some scallions. Um, let's do it the old fashioned way, right? Let's just cut off the bottom, split it to release the flavors. And again, we're going to break this and stick this up in the cavity as best we can, all the way in. Yeah, we have thyme on one side, we have the scallion on the other side. This is going to be lovely when all of these flavors release. Uh, last but not least, of course, is Mr. Scotchy. See here? A lovely Scotch bonnet pepper. He's going into the cavity as well. I don't really mind if it breaks, um, but if you do, then just be careful when you're sticking it in there. And lastly, just some bits of bell pepper at the entrance of the cavity to see if we can hold all of that goodness inside. Alright, so that's, that's the indoor seasoning. Um, you remember now, I had made 
a lovely dry rub which is going to go on the outside of the bird I've mixed them all together I had chicken seasoning all-purpose seasoning um, a little jerk not a lot and then that blend of pimento garlic and ginger we're going to be putting that on the outside of the bird what I have here is some finely chopped parsley and cilantro and I'm going to just lightly season that with some of my dry rum and then I'm going to add about if I can get this thing open yeah here we go I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of sesame oil hello here we go half a teaspoon of sesame oil and we're just going to combine all of these lovely all this lovely chopped parsley and cilantro get it all nicely mixed up we're going to separate it in about two equal portions right and you will see why in a moment now here's a very important part about seasoning a whole chicken um, and making sure that the breast remains nice and moist so what you want to do if you can just come around Colleen and get the front of the bird what you want to do is gently lift the skin and with your finger just poke along inside without breaking the skin and sort of separate it from the meat that will allow you to get whatever you want to put inside the bird underneath the skin and on top of the breast meat right so just take your time lift up the front of it and stick your fingers your hands in there and don't break the skin just make enough of a cavity so what I'm gonna do is I have two two I almost said squares but then my maths teacher from high school would kill me these are two rectangles of butter yeah and I'm gonna put one on one side just get that in there again don't worry about how dirty your hands get people it's part of the part of the fun of cooking one on one side and one on the other side all the way in rub it down and make sure that most of the breast meat or if not all of it gets nicely coated now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your minced cilantro and parsley and you're going to get that stuffed up in there don't mind the messiness okay these are all flavors that you want to get into the bird as best as possible so you're going to stuff underneath the skin on both sides with your and again look you can use any aromatic you like you guys probably figured out by now that I love cilantro um, so I use it a lot whenever I cook today I'm using cilantro and parsley you could use any green aromatic that you wish you could have combined maybe thyme and rosemary um, it's, it's entirely up to you which which aromatics you use uh, when you season your meat it's just a, a question of personal preference all right so you got that stuffed up inside the breast um, get all of that goodness there now I'm gonna just wash my hands for a bit Colleen you can just show them the bird and make sure they see how that seasoning is looking real nice here once I get my hands washed off I'm going to come back and show you a little trick. Everybody knows that the breast cooks first when you roast a chicken. And a lot of times the breast, when you're done, the, the, the thighs and, and the leg, legs may be nice and juicy, but the breast is dry. Well, we hope to eliminate that by using the butter and the herbs underneath the skin. But just to make sure that they both cook together at the same or, or cook properly in the same time what you want to do is turn the bird on the side and on the thigh you get your knife and you just make a few cuts not all the way down to the bone but just make a few cuts in the thigh same thing on the other side if i can turn this bird over without wrecking it let's go 
get to your thigh and you're gonna make some cuts with a sharp make sure your knife is sharp make some cuts in the thigh and that way the, the thigh meat um, with that cut there will get down to the leg as well and uh, they'll both uh, cook round about the same time as you would want for the breast as well so what we're going to do now is add our dry rub I have a little butter left and I am going to put that on at the very end but right now we're going to get our dry rub and we're going to get that liberally on the bird right so a dry rub we're going to massage that in garlic ginger pimento a little jerk some chicken seasoning and some all-purpose seasoning nice flavors you notice I don't have a lot of I didn't have any black pepper but it's because I have a scotch bonnet stuffed into the cavity um, I didn't tell I didn't tell you but I think when I stuffed it in there it actually broke so that's good we're gonna get a lot of nice spicy flavor uh, once this fellow is roasted now we want to turn him over could be a her I don't know so let's turn her over and we're going to do the same on the reverse get our dry rub it's going to get inside those vents that we created in the thigh flavor that meat really nicely let's get it on our wings as well really just want to liberally coat the chicken with all of this dry rub get it nice and massaged in um, make sure that you get a lovely consistent flavor with your spices let's turn this over this cavity is bursting at the seams sorry right, we get it all in there we're going to bring the skin down get it covered there bell pepper not behaving but we we'll soon fix that now we're going to take the rest of this butter and just get that on the skin we're going to use that butter on our hands to pick up any remnants of the aromat of the celery and the cilantro get that there as well use up all the butter um, I'm just going to wash my hands off quickly again and put the final touch on the bird before we let it sit for about 15 20 minutes before we actually put it in our oven so i'm gonna add some sesame oil is what i'm gonna use love the aroma and the flavor that it gives um, and it's gonna give that skin a nice almost asian flavor to it when we are finished all right so we've added the sesame oil we're going to massage that in as well and would say well this is a lot of stuff for one chicken but the truth is if you want flavor you really have to be liberal with your seasonings ideally i should have some butcher's twine to keep my the, the legs of the bird together I don't have any and so we're gonna just secure it as best we can before we get it in the oven so that's your bird stuffed and seasoned uh, as I said we're gonna let that sit for about 15 minutes or so while we get ready to prep um, our sweet potato for the stuffing um, Colleen very quickly wanted us I just want to let the folks see that uh, in in getting ready for my sweet potato stuffing I just have put in in our oven I've taken about four slices of bread and just broke them up into six pieces per slice and I'm just toasting those off for to be added to our sweet potato stuffing all right guys so that's it for now we soon come back back uh, we're gonna get started on our sweet potato stuffing as you can see I'm melting some butter in this pot 
and to that butter which is melting I am going to add some diced onions green bell peppers and scotch bonnet pepper that's where you're going to get the savory in your sweet potato stuffing of course the sweet potatoes are naturally sweet and we are going to be adding some onions there as well but this is definitely going to bring the savory um, to our stuffing so what's going to happen is that we're just going to let those onions bell peppers and scotch bonnet pepper sweat down and folks look at this goodness remember a couple of weeks ago or maybe just about a week ago i had done chicken confit and i've saved the rendered fat with all of those lovely seasonings that we had and i'm going to add about two teaspoons of this rendered chicken fat with all the fantastic seasoning that was in there that's the liquid part actually more than two and i'm going to give you some of the gelatin that's going to also get in there and help those to sweat that's going to bring a lovely savory element to our um, sweet potato stuffing so we're just going to let these sweat down the, f the, f the flame is pretty high and so we won't it won't take too long for these to sweat in fact they're starting to sweat nicely already now you saw those sweet potatoes that I had before I had two of them but this is just one which I have cut into roughly one inch cubes and we're just going to add these to the melted butter and uh, render chicken fat along with our onion sweet peppers and scotch bonnet let's just get these in here let them see if you can stir them up maybe i should have gotten a bigger pot colleen but chop Ooh. so it go um so we just want to combine and make sure that all of these bits of sweet potato get that goodness incorporated in them once you've made sure that they're all coated then what you're going to do is add a little water to that not too much maybe just enough to cover the sweet potatoes um, get them covered so i've added my water probably need a little bit more so i guess about a cup and a half and once you get them covered you're going to bring this to a boil until the until the sweet potatoes are soft and you've cut them into small enough size pieces that that really shouldn't take more than about 10 to 15 minutes max uh, so we're going to just let these boil until they're tender to the touch and um, when we finish doing that we'll show you exactly what else we're going to do to finish our sweet potato stuffing all right everybody just wanted to give you a quick peek at our sweet potatoes they're bubbling up nicely not quite soft to the touch yet we're maybe about eight minutes into um, boiling them and we keep testing the, the, the softness of the sweet potatoes and um, make sure that they're nice and tender before we turn it off I have taken my bread out of the oven and I've just pulsed it in my food processor to create some lovely breadcrumbs I've been you this is um bran bread that I've used and I added just a little bit of garlic powder to it while I was pulsing it so I have a nice garlic flavored breadcrumb to add to my um, stuffing when we are ready soon come back and show you some more okay so here's our bird ready to hit the oven the oven has been preheated to 350 degrees and we're gonna cook this for maybe about an hour and 10 minutes no more than that um, I did say to you that I wanted to make sure to try and secure um, so that the, the, the bird stayed whole and looked good for presentation didn't have any butcher twine to, to truss it and so what I've done is I've just used some toothpicks to secure the opening to the cavity leaving just a little bit of space right at the end there yeah so nicely seasoned it's been sitting for about 15 to 20 minutes just to let everything sink in and now we're going to get this into our oven and roast them up nicely hopefully we'll get some lovely crisp skin as well soon come back guys all right so we're checking back in on our sweet potatoes that were boiling um just checking on the consistency 
I actually did that already and I've turned the, the flame off on the burner or turn the burner off. Um, but let me just give you an idea of the type of um, consistency we're looking for with our sweet potatoes to make the stuffing. So here's a piece and I'm just gonna see if I can cut this to give you an idea of just how soft it is. See that? Trying to lift it up with the knife and it's just breaking apart which is exactly what do you want? Let me see if I can get this piece up. All right, so here's a piece, but you can see, if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's ready to be crushed and ready to be turned into a lovely stuffing to serve with our chicken. I'm just gonna let these sit and cool. I'll come back, I'm gonna strain off all the water. Hopefully I'll catch a lot of the bits of scotch bonnet and onion and so on in the strainer because that's gonna be included in the final stuffing to give it that lovely savory flavor along with the sweet. All right, soon come back. All right, folks, our bird is out. Lovely golden brown skin. Lots of juices there in the pan, which we're gonna use when we put our sweet potato stuffing together. Can't wait to cut this open so you can see just how juicy it is inside. We're gonna come back to this in a moment. We're actually just gonna let this rest for a while before we try to carve it. Um, and then when we put this on the board and cut it up, you'll see what it looks like. When we come back, we'll put the stuff in together for you. Soon call. All right guys, so I've strained off my sweet potatoes. Here we have them, as you can see. All those bits of um, bell peppers, scotch bonnet, the diced onion, it's still there. We're just gonna add this to our bowl. All of that goodness is in there. And again, um, just gonna get everything out, yeah? There's a little bit of liquid that is left here uh, after I strained. And I'm just gonna put a tip of that on the potatoes. Uh, what I did was, with, with my onions, I reconstituted them and that's just a fancy way of saying that I put them back in a little water with a small amount of sugar, I made a little simple syrup um, just to give them some sweetness and I'm going to add my raisins here as well. To my raisins or to the sweet potatoes and the raisins I'm now going to add the breadcrumbs that I made. This is bran bread that I just crushed in my food processor for about four slices that I toasted and I added some garlic powder to that. Colleen, actually what I need is something to just, I guess, not necessarily mash them like mashed potatoes, but similar to how you would do mashed potatoes. If I can just find what I'm looking for, I will be in good shape. Coming right back there. I can't find it, but I did get a large fork. Now I'm just gonna combine these for starters, right? Just to combine everything. I'm not going to really mash them out just yet, right? Let's just combine the sweet potato and the breadcrumbs. I put the raisins in there already, just a little bit more of the breadcrumb. Now what I'm gonna do before I get this really incorporated is I'm gonna steal some of the drippings from my chicken that's the butter and the oil and all of that seasoning that was on it and I'm gonna add this to my sweet potato and breadcrumb mixture to help to give it some added flavor and also to sort of bind it together as well so I've put some I may be putting some more we we'll soon find out but all you want to do with this now is just mash combine everything make it so to the way just combine your your sweet potatoes remember now you you, you boil those in a lot of savory um, seasonings green peppers onions scotch bonnet pepper i have some reconstituted raisins which i did um rehydrated in some simple syrup just water a little sugar come to a boil 
and I've added some of the juice from our, our drippings from our roasted chicken and you don't have to you know mash this out like you're making mashed potatoes you really just want to make sure everything is incorporated um, get your breadcrumbs and your sweet potatoes get that um, juice from the bird I'm gonna put a little bit more right now get up as much of this as you can get it in to your bowl a little bit more if I can yep here we go and then just continue to combine this right again doesn't have to be mashed um, it really should just have chunks of it chunks of the sweet potato still it's a stuffing it's not really a, a sweet potato mash so that's not the consistency that you're looking for um, oh, everything seems to be nicely combined here now the sweet potatoes the breadcrumbs and I've used well the raisins as well and I've used the juice from the chicken the last thing that I'm going to add to this just for some color and just to give it a little bite I diced up some scallion some green onions whatever you want to call it and we're just going to add them into the stuffing and get that mixed in as well so we'll mix these in there's still some heat in the sweet potatoes and some heat from the drippings from the chicken and that will help to bring out the flavor of the green onion and let's not waste any of this we're just going to garnish with whatever is left okay all right so that's a quick sweet potato stuffing that's going to be served with our roast chicken and when we come back Hi guys so our bird's been resting for a little bit we're gonna get some of the dark meat off um, let's just give a gentle cut here see what kind of juices come out have a look at that you see that that's all the butter and parsley and cilantro that we had stuffed up underneath the breast this is one juicy bird gonna just cut a bit off of the breast just a little bit so you can see what that looks like inside as well let's get a nice piece off here look at that people look at the juices coming out of that breast not dry at all that's very tender all of that butter that was up in there you can give it a squeeze you can see it coming out on the side lovely roast chicken herb roast chicken and sweet potato stuffing sunday dinner time all right guys hope you enjoyed um today's meal this is at home restaurant with michael hall we'll come back and see you again soon please remember to watch like and subscribe Hi Gabby, hi Julie. This one is for you. Later guys.